Let's look at another hacker rank problem. Today it will be minimum absolute difference in an array. In the greedy algorithms category, we're going to be using JavaScript to do this one. So in this one, we basically have an array where we have a lot of different numbers and we have to determine what is the smallest difference between two numbers. So make sure to read through the whole problem, understand it all. Uh, we will talk about what a solution would look like and then uh, the different constraints and then we'll talk about an algorithm that we can come up with and then once we have an algorithm that we're happy with then we can go ahead and implement it. So looking through this basically in this sample output uh, sample input 0 we're going to compare 3 and 7 3 and negative 7 and this will give us a difference of 10 we'll compare 3 and 0 this will give us a difference of 3 and then we'll compare negative 7 and 0 which will give us a difference of seven and so the smallest of those three comparisons that we did was three and so because of that that would be the sample output moving on to sample input one we're going to do a, a similar process but this time since there are 10 items in the array that it's inputting it's going to take a lot longer so uh, basically you would compare negative 59 and negative 36 and then so on and so forth all the way down the array until you get to the end then from there we would compare the next number and we've already done this previous comparison so we can kind of shrink the comparison that we're doing each time. Uh, this is still going to give us an n squared implementation and speed is important for this problem because we can have a really big array and we can have really big numbers as well. So we want to make sure that we're accounting for speed in this one. Um, the one other way that we can think of there's no way of really cutting out numbers. Like let's say we've compared negative 59 and now we're comparing negative 36. If we're thinking of ways that we can eliminate comparisons, maybe we don't care about positive numbers in this one. Uh, there's no way to eliminate those. The one way that we can reduce comparisons is if we've sorted now, because we know that if everything is sorted, then this number will be closest to one of the numbers next to it. Okay, so 59 is only next to one number, so we need to compare negative 59 and negative 36. And then if this were sorted, then we could just compare negative 36 and the next one, and then compare the next one and the next one and the next one. So we really do n comparisons at that point. And to sort, it's n log n, so that would give us an n log n plus n solution. So uh, basically n log n. So that would be faster than if we did all these comparisons and then went back and did all these comparisons, did all these comparisons, so on and so forth. So I think that'll be the fastest way that we can do this. So let's go ahead and move forward with that solution in mind. And let's go ahead and implement that. So I've got these three different sample inputs already done here. Um, so actually let's write some pseudocode uh, that will explain what I just mentioned here. So first we'll sort the array and then we will um, compare items as we cycle through it. Uh, as we're doing this we want to make sure to not compare at the end, right? So we'll, we'll start with index 0 and then compare that. Uh, we'll compare 0 and 1 so I would be zero and then I plus one would be one. And then we just wanna make sure that we stop the comparison at the last one. So we don't wanna to get to 75 and then say 75 is I, and then I plus one is out here. We'll hit it out of bounds error. So make sure not to go out of bounds on comparisons. And this will probably happen in, we can prevent this in our for loop. Uh, I guess for the values that we're giving here. Okay, so then once we do this, and let's add comments here really quickly. So we expect this difference, this output to be three, the sample output of the second one, or the input, input one will be 10, and then input two will be five. So let's say that. We could assert things in our, in our console log statements that we have down here, but um, we'll just leave this for now. So we'll just expect 3, 10, and 5 
when we run this. Um, so let's go ahead and implement it. So just to start to make sure that we have all the scaffolding set up correctly, we can just log everything. So we'll just log the array straight up. Minimum absolute difference. What's it saying here? Nice. So I actually don't need to log it. I can just return this. Thanks VS Code. Okay. So now we'll jump into the folder that I care about and then get down to this one. And now we can run minimum diff and it should just pop out all those arrays. Great. So we know I've set it up correctly. Now let's get into the implementation. So first we're going to sort the array. So we can actually just do array.sort. Since it's just individual integers and numbers, we don't need to add anything to sort. So um, if we do this, then it will return right sorted arrays. It'll just sort them right in place, I believe. And then what we want to do is compare items. So let's uh, say sorted array. And then from here, we're going to loop through. And what we want to do is really we want to get one difference. And so maybe what we can do is we can use reduce. Uh, and one thing we have to be careful about is if we're going to use reduce, then we'll have to do something here. Um, so we'll have to prevent it from running on the last one. But um, maybe we'll just do a normal for loop, and that way we don't have to worry about that. So we can say i equals 0, and i is smaller than, whoops, let's fix this here. And so i is going to be smaller than sorted array dot length minus one. So this will this will catch this out of bounds he error here. Make sure that doesn't happen. And then we'll increment. And then we'll do our checks in here. Since we're not using reduce, we can say uh, minimum absolute difference. And we can initialize that to zero. Actually, we don't want to initialize that at all. We want it to be uh, whatever the first difference is. So we want that to be uh, declared but not initialized. We don't initialize it. Let's say we initialize it to zero, then zero would be smaller than any difference we get here. So make sure we don't initialize it. We just give it an empty value when we start. And then within this loop, we can uh, compare since they're now sorted, we'll basically compare i to i plus 1, i to i plus 1, so on and so forth. And so we'll say if i minus, whoops, we actually want the item. So we want sorted array at i minus sorted array at i plus 1. Let's space these out here. And we're going to say if that's smaller, then the minimum absolute difference, then we're now going to set it. So let's put these in variables here so we can reuse this. We'll say current absolute difference. And then we can use it in here. And then if that is true, then we can assign it to current absolute difference. Another thing that we want to be careful of here is um, in the first check, minimum absolute difference, this will not be defined since we didn't initialize it up here. So actually what we can do is we can say that minimum absolute difference equals uh, sorted array at zero minus sorted array at one. And there are a couple of, of holes in the code that I have right now that I'm going to come back to and fix. Um, so this will get our, our first minimum, this will get our first absolute difference. 
and we want to do math abs to do the absolute value and I'll add that further down as well. So this will give us our absolute difference. And then from here, since we're doing this first comparison already, we can start with one, okay? And then go until we get to length minus one. Same thing here, we want this difference to be absolute. And once that's done, we have the difference there. And now that we have this, uh, we're, we're initializing this up here. We, we do want to check one other edge case, which would be, um, I believe this is not protected from. We want to make sure that if there's an array of input that has only one. Okay, yeah. So we do know that, that it has to be at least two size of the array. The array has to have at least two items. So um, we know that this minimum absolute difference, this will always this will always happen, right? So we're not going to get an out of bounds for accessing item one here. So that's good. So there's no edge to catch there. And then uh, from here for I equals one and I is smaller than sorted array dot length minus one. So this, this should work for, let's say we have uh, a last sample input here. That would be sample input three and we want to have this edge case where there's only two items so it shouldn't um, and this would return four and so this shouldn't error on here but we can just make sure that that's the case so we want to make sure that we have plenty of test cases that cover edge cases and it's giving me an issue again because we're not returning anything here so we want to return the minimum absolute difference Okay, so thinking through this, we've sorted the array, and then we get this initialized minimum absolute difference. And then from there, we're going forward through the array, and we're checking if the current absolute difference, which is the sorted array at i minus sorted array at i minus, excuse me, i plus one, uh, if the absolute value of that one is smaller than the minimum absolute difference, the current one, uh, not the current one. If the current iteration of this is smaller than the previously stored minimum absolute difference, then this is now going to become the new one. And then once it's cycled through that, we'll return this. Um, so we've done all these things, and now we can check if our solution is right. So if it is, it shouldn't have any errors, and then it should return 3, 10, 5, 4. So let's see what it returns here. 3134 so that's incorrect uh, excuse me if we go back here sample input one the output was one actually so the the length of the array was 10 so this output should actually be one and then I think the same thing happened down here sample input the array length was five and the output should be three so this should be three and so we'll do three, one, three, four, and that looks like three, one, three, four. It looks like that is what we got. So it looks like we've tested edge cases. We've got it. Um, so that's implementing the algorithm, algorithm we came up with, which is relatively fast considering other ones that we thought of. And um, we're getting the output that we want. So this will cover the minimum absolute difference for JavaScript. And that's another hacker rank um, challenge in the books. We'll see you in the next video.